Hi, I'm Marnie Hannell. And I'm Jen Stevenson. And we're the authors of the Snowy Cabin Cookbook. Snowy Cabin is the fourth in our series that celebrates our joy of of gathering with our friends and celebrating in a seasonal way. Our first book was The Picnic, and this just takes the stress out of going outside and having a casual meal um, and helps you explore parks. And our next book was The Camp Out. We like to say this one is for survivalists with standards. Mm -hmm. Whether you're in the backcountry or the backyard, you're going to be cooking something delicious, possibly over the open fire. And what we also love about this book is this nearly indestructible cover. It's the Wherever truth. you take it. This book has been it's on gonna many be fine. camp outs and it's still... It's still mm -hmm. We think it floats. Yeah, it probably does. Um, and then our fourth book, Summer, came out this summer. And we think of this as the only book you would need to have in a beach house or to celebrate um, the sunny season. And that pairs perfectly with this cozy winter book that we're going to be sharing with you today. We're going to be making two recipes for Melissa's produce, uh, but first let's take a look inside. The Snowy Cabin Cookbook contains more than 100 recipes and it's beautifully illustrated by Monica Dorzewski. We hope you'll use this book as a guide to creating holiday level happiness on any given day whether as a primer for a party or a planner for a week filled with winter activities. In this book, you'll find a surfeit of fireside snacks, suppers that will keep you in the conversation and not just the kitchen, because they can often be made ahead, delicious desserts, bountiful booze, and beautiful breakfasts. There's enough chocolate and cheese in here to transport you to a Swiss mountaintop. But if that's not your fantasy destination, the menus throughout the book can whisk you to any number of idyllic escapes. Many of the projects in these pages, such as dumpling night and ready, set, raclette, are essentially group activities that end in a meal. You'll also find ways to cook for a delightful date, provision a snowshoe picnic, and ace feeding a hungry family in a rental cabin, which can often be poorly equipped. This is the season of dinners with friends, game nights with family, baking projects, and a pot of soup perpetually warming on the stovetop to feed anyone who wanders out of their book nook looking for lunch. Whether you're planning for yourself, a pair, a crowd, whether you're a beginner or an experienced cook, whether you're just here for the fondue or the stocking stuffer, the book fits, we checked. We hope you'll find something that delights you in these pages. In the season in which everyone gravitates to the kitchen, we couldn't be happier to have you in ours. Today we're going to be making two recipes, a soup and a salad. And for Melissa's produce, we wanted to make sure that we were choosing wonderful seasonal ingredients. Uh, the salad we're making is a radicchio, persimmon, and maple pecan salad. And we're also making a soup, which is a roasted kabocha squash soup. And here's, <laughs> here's our here's, model. Here's our baby. Our squash model. Our kabocha baby. Um, but let's make the salad first, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So I think people don't always like radicchio. Do you yeah. want to defend it, Jen? Well, I love a good bitter green. And radicchio provides that bitterness and then some. So what we do is you can kind of take into account who you're eating with, who you're cooking for. Mm -hmm. And if they're not wanting that bitter intensity, what you do is you go ahead and, and you prepare your leaves. We like to tear ours and then you give them a nice water bath for an hour or two and really get rid of some of that bitterness. And if you love it, if you can't get enough, then just, you know, tear and, and mix. Yeah, you could skip that step, but I have to say, I didn't love radicchio, which is, they also call it Italian chicory. I didn't love this until I had it in the soap plate. I also think right. it makes it crisper and um, yeah, I just like it so much more. Yes, me too. Uh, and then the next ingredient we chose was persimmon. Um, there's two kinds of persimmon and I'm gonna let you well, pr pronounce this because- Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. You'll do a great job. What's kind of funny is there are actually over 2,000 varieties of persimmons, mm -hmm. but we'll most we commonly two. see two in yeah. the US and it's this beautiful, round, almost apple-like fuyu. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you'll see the head chia persimmon and that looks more like an acorn. It's more teardrop shaped and it's beautiful when eaten very ripe and soft. You can spoon it out and this guy, it's more like an apple. You can eat him when he's crisp 
and he's nice and sweet and mellow and obviously very, very beautiful. We love combining all these bright colors, all these superfoods. And I would say this one holds on your counter better. So if you're shopping in advance, for example, for Thanksgiving, um, go for your Fuyu's. I also prefer the flavor. How about you? Yeah, I like yeah, them. It's a good one. Um, but don't be intimidated if it's hard like an apple. <laughs> and then we have the beauty of the season, the pomegranate. They've just come into our markets in Portland, Oregon, where we live. Uh, and today we're going to be showing you a really great technique to skip the only part of pomegranates that we don't love, which it's is cleaning them. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get into our recipe. Okay. So we want to start because if you are going to soak these leaves, you're going to need a little lead time for the salad. Give yourself an hour or two, depending on how much of the bitter you'd like to take out. And we love to tear the leaves. It's just sort of, you know, maybe it's a busy holiday and you need to get away from some of your family members and <laughs> go hide in a corner and do something calming. This is mm -hmm. it. Or maybe you're looking for something for the group to do. You know how people are always in the kitchen like looking for some action item. Um, this is a good one. And while you're tearing, you just want to think about what size leaf do I want on my fork? And for us, that's... It's going to fit in your mouth. Yeah, something like this. Something around an inch and a half is probably just about right. Yeah. And if you don't want to do this, uh, just cut it. Yeah, you it's totally fine. Could. Um, so why don't I tear these while you... What do you want to do next? Well, what's nice to do while this is soaking is you can make the dressing and the maple pecans. Yeah. So maybe I'll start the dressing. And I'll finish tearing. Sure. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so one of the beauties of the dressing, it's very versatile. You can really use it with a lot of different types of salads. It's just a super simple combination of sherry vinegar. I've got a nice sherry vinegar from Jerez and olive oil, a little salt and pepper, and then we add in some shallot just for that extra flavor. So you're going to take uh, about a tablespoon and a half of the sherry vinegar. And then you're going to need about three tablespoons of the olive oil. And then a pinch of salt and pepper. You kind of know how much salt you want in there. We like, we like a lot. And then a pinch of freshly ground pepper. And you can just whisk that together. And then you'll go ahead and you'll want a small shallot. However much, you can kind of gauge how much shallot flavor. We like it to be a little subtle. And so we we'll take a little guy like this, peel in, and then just <laughs> throw it on the floor. <laughs> and then just go ahead and you can cut him into rings. You don't want to, it's kind of nice just to have um, more subtle flavor, I think. But you can, you could also mince it up. But it's kind of nice to have, let these rings marinate in there. Yeah, they're so pretty on the salad. It just adds another shape too. It's a whole other, yeah, texture. And it's a nice look. And those are just gonna sit in there. As you'll see, I'm still tearing the radicchio, so it really is a good group it project. It is. <laughs> the more hands, the merrier. That's true. Okay, so we're just gonna put that off to the side. Mm-hmm. And then we'll want to start in on the maple pecans because those those need to cool for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hand you the radicchio <laughs> <laughs> and get these maple pecans on the stove. Um, this one, I don't actually know if I'm on camera right now, this one is just a quarter cup of pecans and we're just heating them over medium heat for about two to three minutes until you just start to get that great fragrance and they're a little toasty and nut brown. Um, we don't have a burner in front of us, so I'm just going to do a little TV magic and bring these back when they're warm. All right, now we're ready to make our maple pecans. And we've toasted them over medium heat for just two to three minutes just to make sure that they get refreshed. They take on a slightly darker they color. They smell delicious. They smell delicious. And I think pecans are pretty easy to burn, so one thing I love about this recipe is that you're just 
watching them. When they go in the oven, I get a little nervous. Then you just take um, a tablespoon of maple syrup. This is going to fizz a little bit, so just be warned. It gets a little bit exciting. So you have to work kind of quickly, and not too quickly, to move them around in the maple syrup. While you're doing this, you want to add a little salt. Um, this is flake salt, but you can also use kosher salt. And then, once everything's all yummy and shiny and looking great, you spread them out on a parchment paper lined sheet pan. Um, just so they don't stick together. <laughs> <laughs> and these ones are all like, you, you want to save your beauties for this task because they go right on the salad so you don't want your broken guys. Yeah. Um, those are great. All right. Love these. Cool. We'll prepare the pomegranate and the persimmon. Oh boy. So if you love pomegranates, but you think it's such a chore to de-seed them, this is kind of a fun trick. Um, you take your pomegranate and you're looking at both ends. This is the end where he was attached to the tree and then this is the flower end. So look for that flower end. It's very difficult to miss. <laughs> and you're gonna take a nice sharp paring knife and just make sure you're cutting through the skin, but not try not to cut through the seeds. You'd like to keep them intact if possible. Go all the way around the top and then kind of pry this cap off the little hat yeah. you got some snacks that fell out too it's going to expose those gorgeous seeds it's also going to show you where the membranes are mm -hmm. the separations kind of like an orange and you're just going to cut down not all the way you don't want to cut just mostly down and you can try to follow those or chart your own path. So you're basically creating sort of petals. And then you're going to gently wrestle those apart. Oh, that guy's tenacious. <laughs> and sometimes you'll see some bruising on a pomegranate and you'll see some seeds that aren't as fresh as others and you, you just discard those. Right, just get rid of those. And then pull out as much membrane as you can sort of reach, just so it's not in your way. Like this bowl, you mean? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like that big bowl. <laughs> and then just grab something in your kitchen that's um, got a little bit of heft to it, a wooden spoon or the spatula. And you're going to invert your pomegranate, kind of fan it out, hold it in your hand, and then just give it, just give it a good whack. Kind of rotate it. Use your fingers to keep those petals open. And you can hear those seeds hitting yeah. the bowl. The best raindrops ever. They're just slowly but surely all coming out. I mean, you can definitely crack the pomegranate open and sit there and pick the seeds out one by one. I've certainly done that. And put on Sade and just <laughs> really, really <laughs> Meditating Check out. <laughs> but this is faster, yeah. and it might lead to eating more pomegranates, which is always a good thing. They're a superfood. They're high in antioxidants. There's a lot of vitamins in here. And plus, they're just delightful. Mm -hmm. And I, although they do sometimes come pre-seeded, uh, I think that they last longer when you do it yourself. You get more, um, and they're just much fresher. Right. Oh, I thought of one thing that we learned about pomegranates doing the book. Oh, what? Which was that, that it's not seeds. Oh, you're right. They're pomegranate arrows. arrows. Which is very that fancy is the, sounding. Very. So that is the proper way to refer to your pomegranate. Look for any strays. Some of them aren't actually in very good shape, so you might as well just leave them in there and yeah. discard them. But if there's any beauties that you cannot live without, you got it. get them out of there. Looks good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you can kind of look into the bowl and you'll see that some of the some of the membrane fell in there. Just pick it out. Yeah, and this recipe doesn't call for all of these pomegranate seeds. So some of the things you might want to do with your extras are top oatmeal, 
put them in a smoothie. Mm -hmm. Yogurt, oh, you yeah. can garnish a, a champagne cocktail with them. Mm -hmm. That's a particularly nice use. And we have some champagne cocktails in the book, um, one of which I think does use pomegranate seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. So now we've got our garnish, our dressing. Um, I think it's time to put our, our salad together. <laughs> yeah. So we'll go ahead and um, pick a really beautiful orange persimmon and you're just gonna slice his head off. Sounded kind of aggressive. Yeah, it did. Sorry. And then just go ahead and cut it into slices. You can really cut them however thick. I like, I like them thin like mm -hmm. this. I don't know if you, do you like them thicker? No, I like it like that. Yeah, it's just a nice the, size. I love to see there's this beautiful flower inside and you so get to pretty. see it. It's like when you cut an apple through the middle and it's just perfect, but that happens in almost every slice. So these are really so beautiful. I think that they're as much for their looks as they are for the taste. All right. Mm -hmm. They really do add something and when you mix them in with that gorgeous purple radicchio. Yeah. Oh. And these are actually, they are grown in California. Um, the other variety, the one that I was having a hard time pronouncing before, Hachia. Hachia? <laughs> the Hachia. I was saying Hachia my whole life um, that I knew about them. Uh, those are usually imported from China. All right. So now we have our persimmon ready to go. Mm -hmm. And we went ahead and yeah. spun that radicchio around. Mm -hmm. We're ready. Okay, let's get our, our platter. Well, right. let's get our mixing bowl. Oh, right, let's mix first. Yeah. That's actually, I mean, you can mix the salad in the bowl, of course. No, I think it's, it's so much better to put the dressing on in the bowl and mix it up. You get right. to distribute the salad without worrying about splattering. I actually think we have more radicchio than this bowl wants. So I'm going <laughs> to switch our pomegranates and use the pomegranate bowl. And I'm going to refresh our dressing here. Okay. Just give it a quick stir. Sounds good. And I'm going to make sure this bowl is ready for us. Okay. That smells really good. I love sherry vinegar. Oh, me too. Uh, I thought that one looked really good. Mm-hmm. Picked a good one. Thanks. <laughs> I did it for you. Wow. I thought you liked that bottle. I really do. Mm-hmm. You're kind of a handsome guy. I do pick things based on packaging often. It was the 25 years on it that got me. I actually <laughs> don't know how long you're supposed to age sherry vinegar, but I thought, but that, sounded, that sounds good. Sounds if good to me. If they're calling it out, it has to be a good thing. So we're just going to give this a nice mix. It's nice mm -hmm. to use your hands, especially with radicchio, because it's so textured. You can really gently work the dressing yeah. into all those grooves. So more on the floor. Okay. Always and on the floor. And that's why. Um... And then when you, the persimmons like to settle to the bottom. So when you go ahead and plate it, mm -hmm. let's see. Just make sure that they're distributed evenly through for appearance's sake. This is purely aesthetic. But it also helps yeah. when you take your serving to make sure that everyone gets a little bit of that beautiful persimmon. Mm -hmm. And then same thing with the shallots, kind of just make sure there's a little here and a little there. And then the maple pecans and the pomegranate seeds are really just beauteous garnish. So um, those I didn't in toss in the bowl because if this were to sit for a while, um, like say for Thanksgiving, uh, you wouldn't want those pecans to get soggy. So I'm just placing the pecans. All right. Yum, 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 yum. And two. And then, um, this is kind of my favorite part. Yeah. I like to put pomegranate seeds on everything. Yeah, no kidding. They're so good. They had such a pretty little and I think our idea with this salad is, you know, winter vegetables get sort of a bad rap because often they're root vegetables, they're sort of one color. By January, you're sort of <laughs> sick of them. Um, so Jen and I wanted to showcase some vegetables that are seasonal um, for winter, but are also quite vibrant, you know? It's true, we did. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> 
should have done this with my hands like you. <laughs> I'm slow with the tongs. Tongs, okay. The tongs are really fun though. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I know, I like these little ones you have. And then we tend to always finish with a little pinch of flaky sea salt. Oh yeah, definitely. So you can add oh. that over the top and a grind of black pepper. I'll let you do that because my hands are kind of oily. I also think it's um, such a nice hostess gift, right? To bring salt with you. Yes. Also, you might always want to bring your own salt anyway because sometimes <laughs> <laughs> if your host doesn't love salt, you might need some more. And so this is a super gorgeous and seasonal salad. Um, and I can't wait to try it, but I'll wait because we need to make soup. Yeah, we have a lot to do still. I know. Let's see. Okay. So I'm going to put the salad over here and let's get right into our kabocha squash soup. Yay. Um, so kabocha squash is a Japanese squash and there's two varieties you might see. Um, they can be orange or green. They are a nice seasonal gourd. Um, so you can turn your Halloween decorations into soup. Uh, and I think the flavor is really interesting. It's sort of, I would describe it as what, like a, it's like a little bit nutty, almost like a chestnut and a the texture sweet. is so soft. It's, it's a little so silky. sweet. It's, it's even sort of, it's not at all cloying and it's almost like, um, an even better butternut squash. So and it's we, a really dense texture, so it's great for soup yes. because it's so silky when you puree it. The only thing that's tough about this squash is it's a, it's a tough nut to crack. <laughs> it is a hard squash. So we're going to show you one technique for how to do it a little bit easier. That involves... Um, oh, let me go get it. An, a knife. Yeah. We need a knife and we need <laughs> a rolling pin. Um, the dream would be to have a cleaver. <laughs> but what you want to do is um, we're going to be roasting this squash on a sheet pan and we want it to sit flat so you want to trim off the knob and glad we got our knife sharpened recently I know it's a good thing to do before Thanksgiving isn't it and I'm ready to call 911 if necessary <laughs> this is fine just kidding um, <laughs> so the safest way to cut this guy is to cut it down the middle here um, but we actually, <laughs> in the interest of time, we're going to cut this guy um, in half this way because it gives us a shallower um, gourd for roasting. So one thing that we've just learned is that you can use a rolling pin or um, if you have a meat mallet to tap your knife in. And it takes some of the drama out of trying to do this manually. <laughs> and it also is super fun. Um. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> You're like the bagel holder. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well I think done. one more whack. Ready? Yeah, go for okay. it. Okay. Really. That was loud. You got it. <laughs> um, I'm sure our sound engineer is loving that sound. <laughs> um, okay, and then you get, it's it's still hard, but you get to crack it open. It's pretty cool. It's all very satisfying. Um, and then you're going to scoop it out just like you would for a pumpkin, and you can roast these seeds. It's really delicious. For our garnish, we're going to use some pepitas and kind of skip that step, but you could use these very pumpkin seeds as your soup's garnish. So let's scoop it out. Right. Spoon. So you can use um, anything you've got, a regular spoon, a grapefruit spoon. Sometimes we use a melon baller because it really oh, yeah. cuts through that. But regular old spoon works. Again, your too. Halloween tools yes. <laughs> are useful here. I think um, the other thing that's cool about the squash is that you can eat the skin. And so you could cut this into moons and roast it. For our recipe, we're going to roast it and then we're going to scoop it out because we want the most vibrant color possible. Okay, so we just took a moment to reset and get ready for our soup because we were set for salad. Um, and this recipe is pretty cool because although we hope you remember our cookbook, you'll definitely remember this recipe. It's one squash, one onion, one apple, and one large shallot. We have two little shallots. <laughs> um, and all you're going to do is 
uh, we're just going to prep the, the veg and fruit for this um, sheet pan. What's kind of great about this soup is that um, you just roast everything and throw it in the blender. It's so quick and easy. Yeah. You can make it ahead of time. So for the onion, you just want to peel it, trim it, mm -hmm. peel it. Try not to cry. Yeah. Well, we were talking about this earlier. We don't, I, we don't cry. We don't cry. When no. we cut onions, we're very, no. very tough onion cutters. Mm -hmm. Just cut them into eight nice wedges. I'm peeling the apple the sweet and in Seattle way because. Do you remember that part of the movie? Oh, yeah, in one peel. Yeah, in one peel. I didn't make it all in one peel. <laughs> you were so close. <laughs> I know. I love your, <laughs> I love your trusty peeler. You're almost there. It, it is pretty sharp. Yeah. I do feel like all vegetable peelers are not created equal. Um, and if there's an intimidation factor for you for prepping things like butternut squash, um, you need a new peeler. Yeah, really, a peeler. Can mm -hmm. make or break your recipe, especially that Julian peeler that we. Oh yes, I love that one. That oh, know. where'd you get this peeler? Um, probably Sterla Todd. Oh. Um, so since yeah. there are two small shallots rolling around, <laughs> um, if you have one large one, just cut it in quarters. These guys are just cutting them in half. Mm -hmm. So they're a nice roasting size. Yeah, and this one, you know, everything wants to be. Sort of equal size to the onions for your apple. Um, and I think we're ready to go. Oh, so we've got our squash over here. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is, oh, we need more olive oil. So we're going to go ahead and pour some olive oil, about two tablespoons, into mm -hmm. the squash. Just rub it around, coat it and then um, give it a nice liberal sprinkle of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the veg, you're just gonna... It's about two tablespoons for the veg too. Throw in your olive oil, salt and pepper. It'll just help season it mm -hmm. as you go yeah. and you can finish it off at the end. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So these, we're going to go into the oven. Do you need salt? Um, I think so, yeah. Um, for, what, a half an hour? And then you pull off the onions and the apples and keep that squash roasting. Do you like some pepper? Sure do. Thank you. Tell me when to stop. Oh, I think they're looking good, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, oh, thank you. you. Oh my gosh, you even spun the tray. It's like, it's like I've done this before. <laughs> Okay, he's looking good. I'm gonna separate this one just because the other one's not separated. So okay, just so he's like the others. And a lot of times when you're roasting on a sheet pan, you want to make sure you get that caramelization with that direct contact. Um, but for this one, we favor easier cleanup. It's totally delicious if you line with parchment paper first. Yes. So now we're gonna put this in the oven at 400 degrees for half an hour. And let's do some magic cutting and bring it back roasted. Oh, all right. All right, so while our squash is roasting in the oven, uh, it's time to make the pepitas. And this is a variation on our recipe that you'll find in the book, um, which is a vegan version that has coconut milk and pepitas and cilantro as the garnish. Uh, there's also an um, option to make this soup with cream and bacon. And it's the holidays, so mm -hmm. choose your own adventure. <laughs> Go for it. Um, these pepitas, it's similar to how we did the pecans, just over medium heat on the stove. Um, what's cool about toasting pepitas is they start to pop. It sounds like popcorn. And yes. that's how you really know you're in toast. when they're done, they puff up. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just like toasting nuts. It just tastes so much fresher and more delicious when you get... And these are so easy. Yeah. You let them cool for a couple minutes mm -hmm. and then you just pour in about a half a teaspoon of olive oil and a nice pinch of chili flake. That's optional if you don't want the spice, it's fine. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's okay, nice but it's extra nice. exciting if you- Good pinch of salt. Yeah, plenty of salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, just stir them, um, shake them, just get that olive mm -hmm. oil distributed evenly in there. And then you can just set them aside until you're ready to garnish the soup and let them cool a little bit more. That's great. And 
And uh, the cool thing about when the vegetables are roasting is you're only using one pan, which is nice for cleanup. And also we find that in cabins, often there's not a lot of great cooking equipment, but there's always a sheet pan. Always. always find her sheet pan. So halfway, after about a half an hour, you remove the Onion. apples and the onion and the shallot. Um, and then you give your roasted squash another half an hour and it will come out looking gorgeous like this. Nice and toasty. So you're looking for this nice caramelization on the edge here. Um, and it should, the flesh will be really soft, so you can test it with a fork and make sure that you can get right in there. And again, you could eat this skin, but we really like this color. So we are scooping it. And if you don't think it's ready, just put it back in the oven for a few minutes. Yeah. Another, not to call out to our, our camp out cookbook, but this is a great, um, uh, vegetable to cook over coals. So if you're in a cabin with a fireplace and you want to wrap your squash in tin foil and cook over those warm coals, you'll get like a nice smoky flavor. Or you could cook it in a smoker too. I think, wasn't that where you originally had a smoked kabocha squash? Yes, I went to a friend's giving and yeah. they have um, one of those amazing smokers. Yeah. And they'd put the whole squash in there, and it was just the best flavor. It's kind of sweet and smoky. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. This is a really fun squash to work with, too. It sure is. If you don't find this squash, though, you could use a red curry squash. You or could use butternut squash. Always butternut. Acorn. Won't be as exciting, but good old butternut's always yeah. there for you, and it's at pretty much any market, mm -hmm. no matter how small you're a town your cabin's in. And this is a blender soup, so if you don't have a high-speed blender in the cabin... Get one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's your hostess gift. It just, it just really purees it so beautifully. It's so creamy. I think, I think that a new blender is going to be my Black Friday purchase. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's time. Yeah. I really envy the wide bowl of your blender. I do like that. Less mess in general. This one, you can kind of, when you get towards the end, kind of peel it out. It's really hard to stop. This is <laughs> so soothing. Thank you. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And yeah, this is what the, we want to get the veg to. Take a look at that veg. So once you're done scooping all your squash, mm -hmm. you're going to, you've had, you've took the apple and the shallot and the onion out earlier, mm -hmm. and you're just gonna add it back in. The other thing I'd point out about this squash is like, look at the yield on that. It looked like we were working with a really tiny squash, right? Mm-hmm, I know. Um, but. I was worried. That is enough. That's all it takes. And then you want two cups of vegetable broth. Just go ahead and pour that in. This is a quart container, but there were two cups left. Don't worry. And then once again, pinch of salt, pinch of pepper. Where is the pepper? Oh. I think the pepper is always missing. Oh, here it is. <laughs> And then um, our, our secret ingredient that's not very secret, yeah. the nutmeg. Oh, yeah. And we love to use fresh nutmeg. It has such a great flavor. There's nothing like it. Mm -hmm. And nutmeg can overpower, as we all know. So You just want to take that little guy and microplane him. Yeah, don't go crazy. And we're looking for about a quarter a quarter teaspoon. Mm -hmm. And it really complements the sort of nuttiness of this particular squash. Smell that. Mm. It's so good. It's amazing. If you don't have a nutmeg, a whole nutmeg, mm -hmm. uh, just use what's in your cupboard. Yeah. The already ground stuff and maybe use a little more. So it's just as intense. It's not an intense flavor in the soup. It just adds this nice undertone. Mm -hmm. And then 
And speaking of that, um, this is a recipe that has onion and shallot in it. And we were we did that because we thought that garlic was too biting in the soup, but that shallot adds a, a sort of a nice, deeper flavor. It's very rich flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to subject you to the jet taking off <laughs> <laughs> but sound of this. This is the time to use your Black Friday blender. <laughs> And you're just wanting a really silky texture on that, so I, it usually takes a minute or so. so. We'll blend it and then we'll come back to garnish together. All right, so we're finished blending our soup. It took about a minute or two. If you feel like your soup's a little too thick during that time, go ahead and just add a splash of, stop the blender, add a little splash of vegetable broth and keep going until it's how you like it. I'd also say you know your blender, like this mm -hmm. blender, anything can go in any order. In my blender, I would have had to put the broth in first and then the veg. So, so then you're going to transfer it to a Dutch oven or you can store it. Um, this actually freezes really beautifully as well. And we're just, we're just warming it on the stove until we're ready to eat it. The color is so beautiful. The texture is really velvety. And mm, it smells like Thanksgiving to me. And this is the time to adjust your seasoning. Do you want a little more salt, pepper? Do you want it thinner? You can add more, more but you can yeah, just keep you adding. Can. Vegetable stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yum. All right, and now we're gonna heat up the soup and then we'll um, come back to garnish together. So we just heated the soup up on the stove mm -hmm. and we would have added the coconut milk while we were over there, but just so that you're here with us, we'll go ahead and do it together. You're just gonna add that half a cup of coconut milk in or cream if you're opting for the cream version. You just stir it in. Mm -hmm. so Totally incorporated. Nice and silky Is smooth. That what you're gonna say too? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. We can finish each other's sentences now. And if your soup has, um, if you're going to freeze your soup, you might have better results if you're um, stirring in cream instead of coconut milk. Freezing the soup before you add the cream. Sometimes cream can separate in the freezer. Um, so that's a that's my hot tip. Don't risk it. But yeah. Okay, so now we're going to ladle this into the bowls. Mm -hmm. Do you want to ladle? It's really fun. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's such a gorgeous color, and you can see how rich and thick that texture is. Mm -hmm. It's a very hearty, cold evening soup. And it makes a nice course for your Thanksgiving dinner, too. Yeah. Also a good lunch for the and we're all to yourself. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move that away. Just move the top. And then it's oh, sorry, do you have then a skin too? We want to go ahead and garnish it. Mm -hmm. These are like so totally snackable that I would just eat I know. them by the handful. But yeah, you really can. You'll want these leftovers. Yeah, for sure. Just go ahead and sprinkle pinch of pepitas on top. Mm -hmm. We have some leftover pomegranate arils yeah. from the salad, and these are great to put on top because when you get one in your spoonful of soup, it's just this beautiful little sweet pop. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a nice surprise. Definitely. And I also just finish it with a little cilantro, just for I feel a like, touch of freshness. I feel like you need more pepitas. I'm all for more pepitas, thank you. There you go. I feel like you need more pomegranate Okay. <laughs> You can never <laughs> yeah. have enough pomegranate seeds, it's really. It's true. The beauty of this soup is overwhelming, especially with that salad. I mean, come on. It's yeah. gorgeous. This color combo is yeah. very fetching. It's so yummy. I feel like this is the color of like every coat right now, too. Mm. So I want to coat this color. You're very on trend. Mm. Mm. So sweet. Mm. So smooth. I really like how that nutmeg plays off the squash. Mm hmm And that pop of that sweetness in here. You'll be licking the bowl. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's kind of making me want something acidic, so mm. I'm gonna get into this salad, which good idea. I have to say, 
I'm gonna be making this for Thanksgiving because it holds so well at the table. And at our Thanksgiving, we have sort of a lingering cocktail hour. Uh, and by the time you get to the table, you want everything to be, you know, as fresh as possible. And this will hold. Mm. That's delicious. It's so good. No, that radicchio soak just pulls out some of the bitter in it, bitterness and plays off that sweetness of the maple pecan so well. Mm -hmm. I like to go to shell it. What was your approach on the person though? Did you? I just it? sort of mangled him. Oh yeah, good call. And stabbed him. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't very pretty. Oh my goodness. Well, I think that's it for us. And <laughs> <laughs> we hope you have a really happy Thanksgiving. Thank you to Melissa's Produce for having us. Um, we'd love for you to check out our book. You can get it at Powell's, which is our local bookstore. Hometown or, Hero? Yeah, Hometown Heroes, right. Or your local bookstore. It's also on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And, and we'd love to see what you're cooking too, right? Yes, yeah, so share your recipes, your, your renditions with us at on Instagram at Snowy Cabin Cookbook. That's the hashtag. And we'll see you there. Thanks so much. Bye.